Okay, great. Uh, thanks for uh, your patience, everyone. We've had a little technical difficulties getting started tonight. I'm here in, uh, well, I was going to say in the studio, but we're not quite in the studio because we're doing this over the internet. But uh, you're in your studio and I'm in my studio. Actually, I'm in my bookstore. So I'm Mark Camby and I have with me guest um, actor um, Patrick Powell tonight. And Patrick and I are going to be talking about um, what he's going to be doing at the Guild. But more than that, we're going to just talk about how God's prepared Patrick to do what he does. And, and if, you're, if you're watching this broadcast right now, you're looking at uh, someone who looks a little bit like Moses, I think. So uh, you're going to be able to, uh, those that are coming to the Guild, this is probably what you're going to look like, only maybe the beard's going to be a little bit longer, wouldn't you say? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> I but, can't uh, wait. Um, Patrick, um, I'm going to pray before we, uh, before we go any further, and just I'm looking forward to tonight and uh, see what God has in store for us. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Father, uh, um, as you're aware that we've had some te technical difficulties, I pray that um, people that would be joining us even now but we'll be blessed by what they'll hear, um, both in what Patrick will be saying, the questions that will be asked. Um, but ultimately, Lord, we'll catch a, a fresh glimpse of, of how you prepare um, people to uh, partner with you in this amazing um, opportunity to share Jesus with a, a lost world, mm -hmm. uh, Lord, through acting. Um, so I pray that uh, you'll bless this evening in Jesus' name. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Patrick Powell is not only a great actor, but he's a friend, a friend of mine um, over the years. Uh, we've got to know each other. And uh, Patrick, what, what was the first, uh, well, before you, we talk about how we got to, to know each other, just let's just start off by telling a little bit of who, who is Patrick Powell and, uh, and what's God doing in your life right now? Patrick Powell is a sinner saved by grace, and thankfully so. Uh, if we go back, I mean, I'll try to nutshell it. It was uh, 17 years ago, this coming October, that the Lord had me pull over on the side of the road and cry my eyes out to Him, accept Him as, as Savior. Uh, it was through a really difficult time. I had just been uh, let go from an 11-year uh, career with a, a local Summerstock Theater uh, because I wasn't of the New York variety. and I don't want to get any more detailed, uh, but um, I was a family man. I had a wife and two children at the time, and we were all dedicated to um, the craft and the life, and uh, the Lord took us out of it. He took us out of that captivity. Mm -hmm. And yes. after getting saved, I uh, was asked to come to teach uh, third grade at a Christian school, Calvary Chapel, the Finger Lakes Christian School which I took as an answer to prayer because both my daughters did not want to go back to public school. Mm. So did so. Great answer to prayer because one of the perks as a teacher there is your kids get to go for free. Mm. Uh, while there, in the first few months, the principal heard that I, I and my wife Judy had come out of the theater world. And so he said, oh, you got to teach a drama class. I said, absolutely not. I have nothing to do with it anymore. I'm the Lord's. He took me out of that life, and that's it. I instantly got sick for two months straight, <laughs> violently ill, uh, and so I went back to the Lord. I said, "Lord, do you want this? Is this because I said no?" And it was real clear uh, through a couple of different scriptures that I was to say yes. And the minute I said yes to having, letting Him, allowing Him to bring me back into that captivity, but for Him, I got instantly well. Oh, wow, and wow. took on drama, uh, teaching, I call it storytelling, I don't call it drama, there's enough drama in the world, uh, but it's storytelling for Jesus, and started teaching that in school, and through several years of uh, a slew of kids, and still working, still doing commercials and some voiceover work, and um, searching out this uh, project that I've been a part of for the last 15 years, uh, which we can talk more about as I get into this, uh, but it's just been a blessing. That Patrick Powell is God's storyteller, his slave, uh, a bond slave to just give him the glory and let everything be about his great works, his wonderful majesty, and how he works in people's lives. And however that comes out, I'm ready. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, so, so tell, tell, tell me, what's, 
the difference between storytelling and drama? <clears throat> drama, if you tag it with that, you get a whole lot of people that want to be actors, that want to be on stage, that want to be the center of attention. Hmm. If you tell them storytelling, I've even I've even experienced. I'm teaching a class at the at the school right now that we dubbed it as uh, the, the principal dubbed it as a as a drama class, a drama club. And uh, the first class, I asked all the students, "Why are you here?" You know, and a lot of them, uh, to a T, would say, "Well, I want to I want to be on stage and I want to act and I want to I want to be in movies or I want to be you know a lot of different things." And I didn't get the one answer I got. Well, the first acting class I ever taught when I was 27 years old, fresh out of college, a little girl, uh, about eight to nine years old, I asked that question to her, and she piped right up, and she said, I want to be a star. And I looked at her. <laughs> Even then, not saved. Uh, that was eight years, nine years before I got saved. Even then, I saw the damage of what that can do to young people. Mm -hmm. And I said, do you know what a star is? And Mark, before I could get an answer out, I was trying to formulate something, my then eight-year-old daughter, Allie, said, it's a burning ball of gas. <laughs> Perfect answer. If you want to be a star, that's all you're going to be. Oh, that's if you want to story tell, because telling stories is what Jesus did. Telling stories is what the Bible does. And it, it happens all to the glory of to the Lord. It points to Him. So a good storyteller can be a great actor. Um, a great actor can't necessarily be a good storyteller. Mm -hmm. so there's, a, there's a phenomenon today with a lot of children, um, a lot of parents preparing their children to be stars, uh, to use their abilities in a professional way as children on television and movies. Um, what's, what's your take on that? What does that does that harm a child? How does it? And, and if it does, how, what, what's happening? Well, if it's if it's done correctly, um, if I could if I could dub the title of the class uh, uh, something other than storytelling, it would be uh, something along the lines to work on weaknesses, to strengthen a, a child's confidence in himself, whether it's public speaking or the ability to communicate uh, one to another. Um, it would be a lot. So if done well, if done accurately, if done uh, in with the right motives, you can nurture in a child to be a better them, hmm. you know, to open themselves up more. There is so much in society right now there is so much insecurity in the in the children. Uh, they don't know themselves. So, 90% of the classes that I teach, a good majority of the time is just spent me observing who my students are, finding out their weaknesses, finding out their strengths, working them through, challenging them. Mm. And yeah, it does a disservice when we're just trying to propagate uh, money makers. Number one, that's a problem, and also. Uh, you have parents uh, pushing kids to be the center of attention, which is dangerous. And right now, the way the social media is, it's very easy for someone to get noticed for the wrong reasons mm -hmm. and in the wrong way. So yeah, yeah. we try to That's warn against good. that. Yeah, and they get yeah, a as a result of all the people's games. Yeah, um, and even inside the church, Mark, the, the arts is a very sent. I mean, it's like worship. It's like worship, man. It can just go awry if you don't keep the Lord as the focus. And the arts in the church can get perverted very quickly and become something about, well, we just want to do Beauty and the Beast, or, well, we just want to do this skit here, that there. And it, it turns into something that people want rather than being led of the Lord. Hmm. And it's uh, it's a very sensitive. I, I prayed with my wife before saying yes to even that drama class 16 years ago. I said, we both said, sat down and said, Lord, if it's not about you and for you and from you, we want nothing to do with it. Because we know what the theater world can do to you. We know what the ego can do to a human being. We know how applause or pats on the backs or, or the, the limelight, as it were, we know how that can damage a person. Hmm. You know, that, that makes me think. I'm going to go out on a limb right now. But let me just share this. Okay. Um, 
I speak in a lot of churches, and uh, the majority of churches, you know, they they'll have a group, you know, singing up there. They'll have a, um, you know, sometimes they'll have a band and, and so forth. And, and most of it is is done well. But I was in a church in Nashville. It was the Village Church. It was called, and um, and they, they had professional musicians, professional singers. Um, this is Nashville. You know, this is the the capital of the song world, you know, and a lot of <laughs> yeah, and and these professionals that were part of the worship team, um, they they had their own album, you know, so they're they're that good. Mm -hmm. But when we had when the service started, I could hear them, but I could not see them. Okay, um, they were sitting in the front, down below, as the congregation was standing. They were sitting down below in the first pew, and you could not see them. And uh, I thought that was kind of interesting that um, they did not want people's attention to be drawn to their abilities. They wanted full attention to be drawn to Christ and the words that were being sung. And that did something to me. And I, I think the reason I bring that up, Patrick, is because I know that what you're, I know you, and I know what you're going to be teaching. And I think when, when young people and middle age and older folks come to the guild, one of the things they're going to be getting from you is a different perspective and what our art is all about and why we perform. Uh, I, I love Second Peter chapter 1. You know, that God has given us an opportunity. He's given us great and magnificent promises that through these we might become partners in his divine nature. And when, when a person truly understands the, the weaving together of, of the very spirit of God in, in, in drama, in performance, in storytelling, where it's you and God as a partner conveying to the world His majesty. I'm telling you, something happens that you've experienced it. And, and that leads me to the segue that when, now I've known you for several years, but when I saw you perform, <clears throat> I saw a completely different Patrick Powell. Um, and now let me tell you why. Okay. You ready? So, <laughs> yes. so the Patrick Powell that I know on a normal daily basis you're um, you're meek and you're mild. You're um, you're you're prayerful. You're sensitive. You have a humble spirit. Um, and I know you have your flaws that um, that I don't see. But but that's the Patrick Powell that I know. The Patrick Powell that I saw on stage was I didn't know who that person was. You were you were a different person. Tell me why. And now let me tell the folks. I saw Patrick Powell do a performance, a one-act one drama, a one-act play. He was the only actor in it. He had the monologue like the, um, uh, what was the name of that movie where, Castaway, you, where yes. he's, and it was St. John of Ex, in the Exile, St. John of Exile, right? St. John okay. yes. in Exile. Um, Dean Jones is... Um, he produced that as a movie at one time, mm -hmm. and you obtained permission to do it this one time. And when I saw you on stage, I saw something completely different. And in what I saw and, and what I heard, Patrick, this is what I heard. You and this is this takes a it's a unique person that can do this. Now I've I've been saved for 39 years, but it's a unique pastor, it's a unique teacher, it's a unique musician, it's a unique actor that can cause the audience to be able to go back in time and be there. I was there when you were when you were doing this this act. Tell us a little bit about how you became Saint John in exile in exile and how did Dean Jones end up get, granting this to you and tell us what this was all about because when I saw that the day I saw that I said this guy's teaching at the guild. Everyone's <laughs> got to see this. Well uh, to go back, and I'll tell you, just to finish on, on your thought, one of the highlighted, one of the, the most favorite comment that I received after uh, the second night, uh, one of the teachers at the school that I've known for 15, 16 years since coming to, to, the, to the church at Calvary, um, he came up to me, tears were in his eyes, tears were in his parents' eyes, and he said to me, Patrick, I just... I don't know how you'd, I don't know, he said 30 seconds, maybe a minute, he said. 
maybe a minute after you were up there, I lost, and he's known me. Like I said, he's known me for 16 years, worked with me every day. He yeah. said, I lost you. You were gone. Yeah. Gone. And yeah. The that's how, that's, Patrick, that's what I experienced. You were yeah. gone. I, I, I couldn't believe it. It was like I was there with St. John. It was unbelievable. It's an actor's, it's hopefully all, every actor's dream and, and purpose. Not necessarily dream, but it's their purpose and their intent to tell the story in a way that the audience can be swept, can be taken to that place, can be can forget where they are, and all of a sudden be somewhere else listening to some. So it was a blessing of a comment. I loved it, and I love your comments. And if uh, if I can nutshell it and not take the rest of the evening telling the story, about a year after being saved and teaching at the school, uh, the seniors were watching uh, Anthony Hopkins in the story. He was retelling the C.S. Lewis story. Great film. The juniors caught wind of the seniors watching a movie during class. Hmm. So they got they got a little bothered. Mr. Powell, why can't we watch a movie? I said, okay, okay, you can watch a movie, but it's got to be something of, of evangelical purpose. It can't be just a general, you know. So I went to the bookstore. And Mark, no lie, I opened the, at back then, and some of the kids won't know what this is, it was a video catalog, and I opened it up, and there on my right hand was this cover of a guy with a cane called St. John in Exile, and I looked at the, I looked at Lori, she was running the bookstore, I said, hey, is this, is this a good movie? She said, it's wonderful, but it's a play. I said, oh, well, that'll test him. So I brought it in. And Mark, the job that Dean Jones does is the same job that you described that I did. And I saw 11th graders in a Christian school in Rapture, yeah. just gone. They couldn't stop. They begged me at the end of the class because it didn't cover the whole movie. Can we watch the rest? Can we finish it tomorrow? And I was blown away. It was the first time since being saved that I had any desire to get back on stage and do anything. And so after about six months uh, of praying, I said, Lord, uh, if anything is going to come of this, I want you to make it crazy. I want you to make it so. It was my fleece, I guess. You know, I don't like to test his, his will or his, his awesome uh, way of answering prayer, but I looked on the back of the DVD jacket, and there was a, a critical review done of the film, and it was by a guy's name and a newspaper. So I looked at the jacket. I said, I'll call the newspaper. Lord, if anything's going to come from this, I want it to be a rabbit trail of, of no doubt. So I called this newspaper. And this is 18, 20 years later. It was done in 1986. Uh, so, yeah, almost yeah, 22 years later. I called the newspaper. I said, hey, you had this guy. He, he reviewed a film. It was a uh, St. John in Exile done by Dean Jones back in the 80s. Uh, did, oh, oh, yeah, he's our freelance. He does freelance now. Let me get you his uh, home number and address. It doesn't happen. Nobody just gives out information to some stranger on the phone. Right. So yeah. I get his number and address. I call it. But before I call it, I pray. I said, Lord, if you want this to continue, let this phone call come to something. Yeah. I get on the phone with this guy. He goes, oh, yeah, I remember that play. In fact, Dean and I, we still touch base once in a while. Uh, here, let me give you his home phone number and address. What? <laughs> I mean, this unapproachable guy. He's he's a he was, you know, a very prominent Disney Hollywood actor. So right. I said, Lord, if this phone call is going to come to anything, let it let it be another crazy rabbit trail. So I I dialed the number, and two rings, Dean Jones. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I said, this is Dean Jones, and he you know he had the whole yes yes is Dean Jones. We got to converse. Uh, we got to talk about that he was right in the middle, just so happens, he was right in the middle of trying to find out whether Dramatist or Samuel French, the two publishing companies in the United States that handle plays, he was trying to see if they would be willing to take on managing the play. It ended up coming to naught because he wanted it done for uh, purely evangelical purposes and for no money. I said, that's my heart. Can I do it? He said, no. I said, okay. And then uh, about a year later, I did the play with his knowledge, but without his permission. I did it legally. I checked with a copyright attorney because the Lord, again, made me sick when I stopped rehearsing. 
I listened to Dean. He said, no. I said, okay. Uh, but I got sick. And I said, Lord, is this because I said no to you? He basically said yes. He kept bringing St. John and Exile back and verses and people that were encouraged me to do it. So I did the play. I didn't do it in its entirety. And I did it at the, the church slash school, which made it okay. I let Dean know that. Uh, and so for the next 12 years, I kept hounding him and asking him and continuously emailing him. We had conversations on the phone. We had emails back and forth. Uh, his personal assistant, Kathy, was a great encouragement, kept telling me to keep asking, keep asking. And the only reason I, I do this, Mark, because God does speak to us. I got to tell you that right up front. I would not hound a guy for 15 years if it was just a play I wanted to do. Right. The night I finished that performance, without his permission but with his knowledge, I did two of them, a Friday and a Saturday. I came home Saturday night. I had an upper respiratory infection. I had walking pneumonia, and I had a sinus infection. I should have been dead, but I sat down at the table, and the Lord told me to read, so I opened up. I did the Merovingian thing, and I just drop the Bible open and I'm right there where Jeremiah was told by the Lord to eat the scroll. Take in these words and then tell my people. So I was like, wow, Lord, that is really cool. And I was just sitting there meditating on that and I did not fall asleep. I did not have a daydream. I was gone. I had my first and only vision as a Christian. And the vision was two-part. It had me standing behind Dean Jones, dressed as St. John in exile, looking across the desert to the east. The sun was rising and this overwhelming need to wait. Wait on him. Don't go ahead of him. Jumped right to the second part of the vision where I was clad as St. John in exile, and I was walking through glass doors, wooden doors, upstairs through doors, downstairs through doors, on streets through doors, all these different doors at St. John in exile, and then I came out of it. And it was, it was not quite clear. The second part was clear to me, that I was going to do St. John in Exile over and over and over again, wherever the Lord led. Uh, but I didn't have his permission. So I said, the first part just means wait for his permission. Well, with all sensitivity, and I don't want to sound like somebody who's macabre, but the first part of the vision was to wait for Dean Jones to pass. And Dean Jones, last September, uh, went home to be with the Lord. And so I thought the process was going to have to start all over again. Uh, I did receive permission from him before he passed. Two years before he passed away, he gave me permission to do it twice at Calvary of Finger Lakes, and that's where you saw it. That was back in October of 2014. And since then, I've been petitioning. He passed a year later. I sent letters. I was invited uh, by video link to the memorial service. And I just got back from California visiting friends that are out there. They uh, came back from Uganda. They're now living out in Corona. They invited us out for a week of sun and fun in L.A. And had a heart and hope. And I left, sent an email out that I was going to be there in case they wanted to meet. Or could we sit and chat and pray about this? Uh, Mark, you don't even know this. I came back from California. It's such a God story. I came back with full permission to do St. John in Exile through the year 2016, and then we'll talk about it more later. Wow. Praise so, the Lord. 15 years of praying, God answers prayers. All you have to do is be patient and wait, wow. and don't doubt him. That's eight awesome. months ago, you looked at this. You said I had short hair. I had short hair eight months ago. The Lord said, grow your hair and beard again, Patty. I said, Lord, I'm not, I don't have permission. What do you want me to look like a freak for? <laughs> <laughs> you don't look like a freak. You look like Moses. <laughs> yeah, he was so clearly intended that he knew permission was coming, so now I don't have to wait to do the play at the end That's of this year. I, I'm ready for it. The what, are, what are the possibilities... I know we're going to be doing Basket of Flowers at the Guild um, as part of our stage acting, but what's the possibility in that, that you could do just a, a segment on one of the evenings of St. John? Is that possible? It would, have to, it would probably have to be kind of a black box sort of thing. It may just be... Uh, I'll have, let me see how this... The, because right now I'm finishing up with the drama class and I'm working on... Uh, Okay. 
the adaptation of Basket of Flowers into a stage play. So, okay. Well, let's let's talk about let's talk about that. What's your vision for for the students when they come? Um, talk about what we're going to be doing and and what how do you foresee this whole thing um, moving forward with the students in the Basket of Flowers and 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 will they be able to do it? And when they leave the guild, will they be able to take this with them into their churches? Yes, it's going to be a crazy week. It's going to be absolutely insane, fast paced. I'm probably going to end up losing my voice, but that's okay. Uh, from the ground running, and well, even prior to hitting the ground running, I want the students, whoever they are, to be able to uh, have in their hands. I've asked if each student could have a three to five minute monologue prepared so I can see uh, what they're capable of, so I can get to know them a bit right off the bat. Uh, not necessarily an audition uh, process, but it is uh, just to let me know where they are as far as their abilities. And uh, and I know it's asking a lot, but you have got a couple months, students. Uh, to read and get familiar with Basket of Flowers because if we're going to tackle this thing, if we're going to try to take on uh, what's probably going to be about, uh, probably could be about 45 minutes at least. It's going to be a one act. We're not going to take an intermission. It's going to be straight through uh, a 45 minute to an hour long production done as fully produced as possible. I don't want to go black box. I want a black box is just a simple uh, no frills, no props no costumes kind of story. It's a, it's a black, uh, it's a black and white storytelling of, of uh, Basket of Flowers. I don't want to do that. I want to try to get a little crazy because part of the class is going to be theatrical production. You know, I want to share with the kids uh, how they can shoestring it, how they can make a production without a whole lot of money, without a whole lot of anything. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can tell stories as simple as they, as, as they can be and they're still poignant and powerful. Uh, there's going to be an introduction process. There's going to be lots of theater games, lots of uh, opportunities to get embarrassed, to stretch your your limitations, to get challenged, to walk outside the box on a ledge, and and feel like you're going to fall and fail. But it's going to be safe. It's going to be fun, and there's going to be a lot of encouragement. Um, what what ages are you looking for? Oh, I'll, any. Uh, well, I guess is the guild limited down to like. Take 15, we're, we're, not we're, take, take, we're not going to take people over 100 this year, so we're keeping it 16 to 99. Okay. Yeah, age, age doesn't matter. In fact, uh, yeah, there is no limitation on age. What I ask and hope is that um, people that are coming, students that are coming, leave your experience at home mm. and just come in raw. Just come in with a, di a desire to see what the Lord is going to do with you. Uh, don't bring anything to the table. We'll find that out, and we'll discover things together, and that will be uh, a much more open way that you can prepare for him to do something in you. Mm -hmm. I see so many times kids come in, well, I've done this play, that play, and that play, and I've been here and here, and I've been on television, and I've been here. I don't want any of that. I just want you to come in raw. And let's see what the Lord has for you, because I, the theme of the whole guild is uh, to become a better artist for the Lord's glory. I'm paraphrasing. Can you clear that up for me, Mark? Well, we're um, we're changing the theme. Actually, we're oh, well, you originally it was fanning the flames of the gift that was in you, right? And we're still, we're still going to do that. We're going to fan the flames of the gift that is in you, so that people can partner with God. But I, I have been somewhat compelled. To move it slightly, actually it's moving it quite a bit, to uh, touching touching the divine. Mm -hmm. um, Second Peter chapter one, um, becoming a partner with his divine nature, and then the woman who had the issue of blood. Mm -hmm. um, remember when she touched him? Do you remember what Jesus said first? Who touched me? Who touched me? And the yeah. apostle said. Well, what do you mean who touched me? Um, you, everyone's rubbing into you. You know, there's a massive crowd here, throngs of people. And then he said, no, somebody touched me or power or virtue has come out of me. And so I, I, when I think of that, I think that God wants to be touched. 
I, I think that in our acting, um, in our presentation of the divine to others in our life, I think that God wants us to touch him first before we can touch somebody else. No, I agree 100%. Yeah. Yeah, so, that's... Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm super excited about the Guild this year. Um, not only is it crazy here, the work that's being done to prepare for this thing is unbelievable. It's been construction crews almost on a daily basis for the last, since January 2nd, this place has been under construction every single day. It is crazy here. Um, in the, in this, this theme of touching the divine, I'm so excited about it because I, I think that God wants to be touched. And when he's touched, when you touch God on an emotional level, we're, we're created in the image of God. We're, we're emotional creatures. Mm -hmm. I think God wants to be touched emotionally um, through our lives and our partnership. And when we do, I think then virtue and power go out of him to us. Mm -hmm. That power and virtue now in us is what we now are able to share with the world. And so I'm hoping that that's what's going to take place in the guild this year. Well, i got to share this with you, Mark. Just the other day, sitting at lunchtime uh, in the prayer room at church, I'd taken a break from the radio station and found one of those rare moments to just sit before the Lord and be still. Mm -hmm. Not have a thought, not have a request, no petitions. And I just asked the Lord. It, it's a, I love the story of when Esther is asked, by the king, what do you want? Anything. I'll give you half my kingdom. What do you want? She turns around and says, what do you want? I want to serve you. I want to bring you a meal. I want to do this for you. So I was sitting there, and I didn't ask the Lord anything. I said, Lord, I want to know your heart. Wow. And I hear your heart. And it wasn't about me personally. It was just a general throw it out there, and I was ready. And for the first time, Mark, after 16 years of being saved, I wept uncontrollably because of his broken heart over this world. Wow. I felt that. I've never felt that as, I, and as an actor. You get to garner all your baggage. You get to pull out of your joys and your sorrows and use it on stage. I have never felt that kind of anger. Wow. That kind That's of beautiful. Girl. That's we, the he wants. We were in a prayer meeting last night up in the woods with my staff, and um, we all started to pray, Lord, um, we we want to we want our hearts to break over the things that break your heart, and our whole group started praying that way. That you know that we felt there was a, somewhat of a coldness in our lives. We're so busy that we've lost a little bit of our passion and compassion for the lost that are around us on a daily basis, and we we really want that. And one of the one of the people that prayed it was kind of cool. Um, and I don't think he would mind me sharing this right now. He, he's, he said, Lord, he goes, just forgive me for my selfish heart. And uh, and I thought that was that was just, that's brave to pray in a, in a in a meeting like that. But we were all trying to just be, be just bear our souls to the Lord with each other, you know. And I think that's, that's so important, you know, that we, we don't hold anything back, you know. And we're raw material that God can use, you know. And, and, right. Uh, Anyways, uh, today, um, he's a beekeeper, and today um, there was a swarm of bees that was um, on my property, and I went down and I got him. I said, you got to see this, and he saw this, and he was like just praising the Lord, and I said, you know, yesterday, I said, um, you asked the Lord to, you just got real with God, and I said, I think God, this is his answer to you. He just wants to pour out his blessing in your life. And this was like, you know, $300 worth of 20,000 bees. You should have seen him. You know, he was, he was getting it in his hands, you know, and collecting them. And I'm scared to death. I'm videotaping the thing. And just God's blessings. You know, I think a Psalm, I think it's 84, talks about, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. You know, one day um, is better than a thousand. One day in his courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. And then it goes on to say, that he's a sun and is a shield. And then he gives grace and he gives glory. And no good thing will he withhold from them who walk uprightly. 
Yeah. I, Patrick, I think during the Guild Week, that's what we're going to be presenting to these kids and to the, the older adults that are going to be coming. And, and I can't emphasize that more. Um, all ages. In fact, the, the older the better. You know, when yeah. you come to the Guild, you there are we're ageless, really, isn't it true? We are ageless. Yeah. Um, no one realizes age anymore. All of a sudden, you realize that you're, you're brothers and sisters in Christ, and we are on the stage of life. That's what I love about what you're going to be doing, because you you are going to be you're going to be the essence of Second Peter chapter one. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness, according to a full intimate knowledge of Him who's called us to His own glory and virtue. By which he's granted unto us great and magnificent promises that through these we might become partners in his divine nature on the stage of life. You can get Patrick ready for this? You're gonna love this. The next word is well, he says, and besides all of this, that we have these great and magnificent promises, mm -hmm. that we can become partners in his divine nature. He says, Besides this, I want you to add to your faith. Okay? Mm -hmm. The word add in the Greek is korageo. Now let me let me let me just sound it out and you tell me what you think it means in English. Korageo. You get it yet? Korage. Korageo. Okay, no. Koragari. Kor Choreography. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow. It's the word choreography. It's the word to choreograph. It's God telling us, and it's the word to add at your own expense, it's both the chor chorus director, the stage director, the donor, the one that pays for everything, all in one person. God is telling us, I want you. He says, I've given you all of these promises. Now I want you to go on the stage of light, and I want it to cost you something. I want you now to present to the world who I am through your life, and I better cost you something in order to do it. It's the word choreography. Wow. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Well, I couldn't think of doing it with a better man. Um, I, I have. Um, we've had amazing talent in the past with uh, Kathy, Sarah, and Peter Morton from England. And uh, Peter, or, or I mean uh, Patrick, I place you right up with that level with them. And uh, when, I, like again, when I saw you do that act with St. John in Exile, um, you brought me to another place and another time. And in order for someone to do that, God has given you mastery skill. And he's not only giving you mastery skill, but he's giving you something else. He's giving you a heart that not only loves him, but loves people. And that's why I want you here. And I think those that are going to be part of your class are going to be greatly blessed. They're, we're going to have fun. Let them know uh, student-wise that they're, we're going to be two, and we're going to be 92. We're going to play around and have a lot of fun. We're going to be silly with each other, and we're going to have a blast. We're going to get sober. Uh, we're going to be serious. And awesome. uh, a lot of hearts are going to be changed. A lot of hearts are going to be strengthened. Awesome. Well, Come Patrick, it's, it's been my pleasure and privilege to, to introduce you to our guild, potential Guild students and our Guild students and our alumni. And uh, just looking at you, is if it's any indication of what the week's going to be like, we are going to be in for quite a time. Thank you. Thank you. Wild. <laughs> You're very welcome. I'm blessed. Lord bless you, and we'll see you in about two months. Excellent. Okay. God bless I'll you. you. Good night. I'll come down and visit. Sounds great. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for attending tonight. Um, this is Mark Canby with Patrick Powell, who will be teaching in the dramatic arts, stage acting, voice acting at the Lampwater Guild for Creative Disciplines. Uh, 2016 here in Mount Morris, New York. God bless you all. Good night.